Today we are making vegan shepherd's pie, which is perfect for this time of year or any time of year. I mean mashed potatoes, meat, and veggies topped with some gravy. That's just a good combo in my book. But it's also a perfect main dish for a holiday gathering. And the good news is it's pretty easy to put together. So let's get it going. So let's start with the potatoes. I'm gonna be using my good buddy Yukon Gold, but use the russets if you like. Either way, we're gonna get three pounds of them and try to get potatoes that are roughly the same size. Next, we're gonna peel them and I like to let them rest in some water while I peel the others. And then once peeled, we're gonna go ahead and quarter these and then drain them to get rid of that starchy water and then add enough cool water to just cover them. Then let's head over to the stovetop and to infuse some flavor, we're gonna add in about four to five cloves of lightly crushed garlic, as well as three decent pinches of salt. Bring that up to a boil and then lower the heat to a heavy simmer and cook those taters for about 15 to 20 minutes or until they are fork tender. Next, let's drain them and shake the strainer around to get as much liquid out as possible. We want these suckers dry. So we'll return them to the pot and cook them on medium just for a minute or so to get out as much moisture as we can. Now it's time for my favorite part, the ricing of the potatoes, which requires a potato ricer naturally. And I do love this thing. Not only is it super fun to use, but it makes for some super smooth potatoes as well. You can use a regular masher, but get one of these if you can. Now, usually I'd add vegan milk or cream cheese, but I've been seeing a lot of recipes where people just use butter. So I thought I'd give that a shot. So I got one stick or a half cup of softened salted vegan butter. We're gonna toss that in and then fold it into the potatoes. I gave it a taste and decided it needed some nutritional yeast, AKA nooch. So I sprinkled in about one tablespoon worth of that. I then felt it could use a little more butter. So I added in two more tablespoons as well, gave that a mix and tasted it. And because of the salt in the water and the butter, it was perfectly salted, but always season yours to taste. But there we go, super buttery vegan mashed potatoes. And I totally dug this version without any milk or cream. So give it a try if you wanna do something a little different. But now next, let's make the meat filling. For the veggies, we're gonna dice up some mushrooms, carrots, celery, and shallots, or onions if you like. We're gonna do one cup of all of them. And when I say one cup, I mean one slice. They should all be about one cup's worth each. We're also gonna mince up about four to five garlic cloves. For the herbs or herbs, I'll be chopping up some sage and then some thyme. Also, in case you don't know this little trick, to get the thyme leaves off, just run the stem through your fingers like so. Somebody showed me this years ago and I felt like a dingus for not knowing it. So I'm showing this just in case one of you feels like a dingus right now as well. And I didn't use rosemary because I couldn't find any. And, and I also chopped up some parsley, but I forgot to use it because I'm still a dingus. But I'm sure it would be delicious if you want to add it in. And for a shortcut, you could totally just use some frozen veggies like this. No shame in that at all. Next, let's get a cast iron skillet, which by the way, we'll also be baking the pie in. So it's a one pot recipe, unless you remember the pot we boiled the potatoes in. So just forget about that pot for now. But we'll add in one and a half pounds of some plant-based meat. You could also use lentils or you could make some vegan ground beef with tofu. I'll leave a link in the description for that video I did a few weeks back. But for our plant-based beef, we just gotta break it up and cook that until it's no longer pink. And then we're gonna remove it and reserve for later. And if you have some sticky bits, AKA the fawn, go ahead and deglaze with some water or red wine and scrape it up. And I'm just gonna add most of this back to the bowl with the plant-based meat. Then we're gonna toss in two tablespoons of vegan butter along with our mushrooms. And we're gonna cook those down for about four to five minutes or until they've shrunken up and got some color. Next, we're gonna toss in our carrots, celery, and shallots. Give them a little pinch of salt and cook those for about eight to 10 minutes or until they've softened and got some color as well. Next, we're gonna to toss in the garlic as well as the sage and thyme. Stir those around and then let's drop in two tablespoons of tomato paste and one tablespoon of what's this here sauce. Mosh everybody up and then after a minute or so, let's add in two tablespoons of flour and mix that in. Now it's time to party, so let's add a half cup of red wine, stir that around, and then let's add our reserved beef back to the rager. And our beef is really crashing the party in a serious way, so let's break it up and stir it around. And then we're gonna add in one cup of vegan beef broth, or veggie broth will work as well, combined to get everybody nice and mingled, and then about one cup of frozen peas. Stir to combine, and then press the meat mixture down and try to get it as level and compact as possible. You don't gotta mash it down, but firmly press it with the back of a spoon or a spatula. 
And then next, it's time to top with our mashed potatoes. So slop those down and just smooth them out and try to make them as even as possible. It's okay if it's not perfect. I mean, this is a rustic dish. And to me, rustic just means full of mistakes. So it's fine if it's a little uneven. And now I don't know why I smoothed it so much since I'm just gonna run a fork along it to create some nice craggy lines. This will encourage some nice browning when we broil this at the end of the bake. Speaking of which, once your pie has been blessed with your artistic flair, let's go ahead and add it to a preheated oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes. After that, go ahead and broil it for about three minutes or so until the top is brown to your liking. Just keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. And now we have to let it cool for 20 to 30 minutes. Yep, just like Tom Petty said, the waiting is the hardest part, and that's true for this dish. But during this time, you can clean up or make a quick brown gravy. Just get four tablespoons of vegan butter, melt them, and then add in four tablespoons of flour, one tablespoon at a time, and whisk in, and then slowly whisk in, two to three cups of vegan beef broth or veggie broth, of course. I'm also gonna augment my broth with one tablespoon of mushroom seasoning. And then if you can get some of this gravy master or kitchen bouquet, it really pluses up the gravy, but it's totally optional. Throw in a sprig of thyme if you wanna, and then let that thicken up. And there you go, some delicious vegan gravy. So go ahead and scoop out a serving of the shepherd's pie and drizzle on some of that gravy. Get a spork if you like and dig in. And I gotta say, I totally understand why this dish is such an iconic classic. I mean, the buttery, fluffy mashed potatoes with the crispy bits on top, the super savory, meaty filling, and that rich brown gravy. It's just an unbeatable trio. It's about as cozy and comforting as a dish can get. So I really do hope you all give this one a try. And if you want some more comfort food, check out this playlist I got right here. And until then, I'll see you all next time.